Um, there was this the scenario that I thought of years ago. It actually started to, when I was a cop, and I've been thinking about this for 15, 20 years, and I call it the watermelon tossing scenario. Yet, is it okay if we go over that? Yes, I would love to. I think it's a great discussion. Yeah. And, and so uh, kind of this, the way the scenario goes is there are four p- uh, people uh, standing on top of the overpass and there's the freeway going under that. And we can say they're teenagers, but that doesn't really matter. Wh- whatever the deal is, they're standing up there and they have watermelons and the, all four of them throw a watermelon uh, off of the overpass, but they're each in a little bit different situation and have a different intent. And so I'm going to kind of run down just quickly what the three or what the four of them are thinking, but the the punchline of this, the question that we're going to ask afterward, uh, after I spit out the the quick scenario, is assume that you are uh, the judge, you are the arbiter, and the whole if you're familiar with libertarian philosophy, let's say it's a DRO, a dispute resolution organization, or some sort of other arrangement, but all parties involved have previously signed a contract saying you are the judge. You get to decide whatever you want using your best judgment. You get to give penalties, uh, punitive penalties. And so we're also going to assume that the results of these guys throwing the watermelons over the uh, top of the overpass, uh, we're going to assume that any damage that is done, actual physical damage, that's already been paid for. So I'm kind of replicating the idea of in today's system, we have a uh, a civil and a criminal, uh, kind of two separate things like O.J. Simpson uh, was tried in the criminal system and was not found guilty, but then he was tried in the civil system and he was found guilty. So there are two separate systems going on. So for the sake of this scenario, we're just pretending that we're the, we're the punishers that teach people a lesson so that they don't (laughs) do something wrong the next time, but it's all voluntary. So you're not a bad guy. We've all asked you to be in this position. So first dude that throws the watermelon over the top, uh, we'll call him Bill. He just thinks it's funny. He throws a watermelon. Uh, he wants to scare the car that's driving down below. He doesn't want to hurt anybody. He just wants to scare him. And he throws a watermelon and he completely misses the car. Uh, the watermelon lands on the ground. The, the car doesn't even know it. So good for Bill. Nothing bad happens. Next guy, Sam, he throws his watermelon, but deep in his evil heart of hearts, he is hoping that it's going to land on the windshield of a car, break it, kill the driver, make the car swerve off the road and crash and burn and kill everybody inside it. That's what this evil bastard wants. And in his case, in Sam's case, he was a good shot. Uh, That's exactly what happened. Well, now the third guy throws the watermelon. His name's Jack. He throws a watermelon. He intends to just, you know, same as Bill, just a funny prank. And unfortunately, he hit a car and the car swerves off the road, bursts into flame. Everybody dies. Um, So same result as Sam, but the same intention as Bill. And then the final guy, David, he throws his watermelon and he has the same intent that Sam had. He wanted death and destruction, but fortunately he completely missed and his watermelon just hit the ground and splattered and the driver didn't even know it. So judge Christian, judge listeners, what, uh, what do you think should happen to these folks? Well, I think it's really important to start with the fact that the people who didn't hit anyone uh, there is no association is what is the saying? Nine tenths of the law, I believe, uh, in this case. So I believe it was Bill and David who both missed. Correct. Yeah. Correct. In this scenario. So Bill and David, they didn't hit anybody. It doesn't matter what their intention was. They didn't cause any property damage. They didn't aggress against anybody. So there's no there's no penalty to be issued at that point. Uh, Sam and Jack, however. So we have two cases of clear aggressions, right? And the question at the end of the day that I think this is really trying to get to is does the intent of the person matter when distributing punishments, right? And the, that leads to a lot of interesting ethical questions. So if you boil all of this down, we're asking if someone murders someone accidentally and someone does so with the intent to murder someone, should they be issued separate punishments? Now, I haven't spent 
a ton of time on considering exact punishments for different things because I'm again I'm more on the ethics side less on the uh, I don't want to be an arbiter let's just put it that way <laughs> I wouldn't want that job I'm sure they'd get paid well but um, I wouldn't be the one, one wanting to make that decision and in this case it is, it is difficult because the initial reaction is obviously I think nine nine out of ten people watching this and I'm going to generalize a little bit would say oh, well, the one with the intent to murder should be punished more than the one without the intent to murder. But if we're asking what justification there is for that, it's it's going to be some sort of a, it's a basis not on an aggression itself, but on the context of an aggression, which ethically doesn't make any sense, right? And I want to explain that just a little bit. I know I'm kind of rambling here. No, but, I love <laughs> it. That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> yeah, I want to make sure the context is fully filled out here. There is no difference between the intent or lack of intent of a crime or any other thought committed at the time of an action. If I wanted to kill you while I killed you, or if I was thinking about pizza while I killed you, it doesn't change the aggression. The, the, the crime is killing you. The crime is not wanting to kill you because we can't police people's thoughts. So the ethical spot, what I would believe is the ethical response. Now, this is under contract, so you could say that intent counts and adds X percent to the punishment if that's in the stipulation of your arbitration agreement. However, I would believe that the ethical response without that context would be to punish them both equally. What would that punishment be? Um, I, I, I want to immediately go to fines, but I don't think I don't even know if that's appropriate in this situation. Um, you would have to find something that is applicable for adequate restitution. Locking someone in a cage is not very productive. It's not a productive at all. Someone has to pay for them. And I highly doubt that Sam and Jack have put in enough money to pay for their own jailings through all this. Um, so I think you have to, you have to extract uh, property from them until the people who have been damaged or their, spouse or significant other or whoever is in this arbitration agreement to be the one that gets the property is uh, satisfied because really that's what it comes down to. What, what does it take for them to re-enter into the reciprocity of rights after they violated them? Uh, it is a flexible scale. She, she could be super forgiving and say, you know what? I forgive you. He's dead. I know you made a mistake, but uh, you, you, I, I forgive you and they can re-enter into polite society until they mess up again. But uh, that's entirely on whoever the um, I'm trying to figure out what the word I'm looking for is here. But whoever will be receiving the the benefit of the the penalty these two take. So, yeah. Uh, does that answer your question at all? Yes. And I, I'm, I'm thinking back to the old days back. Uh, there was a guy that used to be a, a voluntarist philosopher that uh, he had a, a, a series of podcasts about. I think it was these cages are for beasts or something like this stuff in And, Molyneux. and mm. <laughs> one of the things he talked about was what is it we really want? Do we want a pound of flesh or do we just not want this person to do this again? And, and I wonder if a the victim's heirs might be chatted with with a calm arbiter and say, well, what do you want? Do you want this person to just have a miserable rest of their life? Or would you like them? Are you really into, uh, I don't know, highway cleanup stuff? Would you like to see if they'll just do an hour a week for the rest of their life of picking up litter off the highway? Or, you know, what, what can we do that would be positive for you? And I, I think that makes good sense. And, and I have to think that most people aren't bad people. They're going to be angry right off the bat. But then once they calm down a little bit and see the human in the other person, um, yeah, I don't know that everybody needs a huge pound of flesh, especially for the guy that was just trying to have a little bit of fun and oopsie daisy. He had no malintent. He's just trying to have some fun. Yeah, I think I could forgive him much more easily. Yeah. And at the same time, you know, I think part of the beauty of a system like this is that it doesn't you don't have to be a benevolent soul. There is something for you to potentially gain through this. Um, you know, if if you want to look at it from that perspective, there are multiple motivations why you would not want to lock that person up. Like, let's say they have to work part time at your store for the next year. Like, yeah. there you go. You got a free part time worker for a year while they pay off their their debt to for killing your significant other or whatever. 
And who knows, maybe they'd be a great employee and you can officially hire them on after that. Yeah. Um, there are ways you can personally benefit while they still have to pay, whether it's their time or their money or something to to prove that they want to re-enter into the agreement of reciprocity. That's a whole the point of restitution is to hurt. It is supposed to be your it's like a, it's almost like it's, it's kind of a, I'm tr- it's almost ritualistic in a sense. It's like I'm going to give up a piece of myself as property to prove that I, I understand the error of my ways and I want to do better. Um, that's the whole reason the penalty exists, um, as, as opposed to today, where they just do it and slap you on the wrist and say, OK, we're going to take this. Don't do it again. And it, it doesn't matter anyway to Sunday. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the the big answer also that the reason we're having a conversation like this is it's a it's a thought exercise. It's a brain exercise. But in truth, those of you that are thinking and just saying, ooh, ooh, ooh I wish I was on, on the line so I could give an even better answer. I have a solution here. The truth is neither you nor I nor Christian have a good answer. This is a complex issue. There is no way that we could look into the future and centrally plan the thing that would be best for society. Just, I I can't, and I think I'd be better than most at it. No way I'd be successful at it. (laughs) And that's a good argument for why you guys should not vote for me for president or commissioner. And I'm better (laughs) than any of the folks that want to get elected for that. So if you're not going to vote for me, don't vote for them either. I don't (laughs) vote.org. (laughs) <laughs> there we go. Exactly. Uh, I believe Lysander Spooner once said uh, voting be whack or something like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like him. <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure it's a direct quote. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you kind of mentioned the, I just wanted to say real quick, uh, I've been doing a lot of these hypotheticals recently on and off air and I love them, honestly. The, well, I think the nap ones, like, is this a nap violation? Like that's a little old because I feel like we've kind of gotten pretty good at defining what an aggression is. Uh, but I think these kinds where it's like really into the nitty gritty and like, okay, what does the ethics say what we should do in a system of arbitration fall fundamentally at the end of the day, this is a contract based system. So it could be whatever you signed. If, if you signed one that says I have to trot through the snake pit to prove myself, you know, <laughs> that's you signed the line, you know what I mean? Right. Right.